Welcome back. Now for your five-day weather forecast, we go outside to Tatiana Patterson. Expect sunny days leading up to and into your Thanksgiving weekend. If you keep those umbrellas close by, you may need them heading into next week. Here is your complete five-day weather forecast. Today, skies will be clear with a high of 20 and a low of 9. Tomorrow will be another sunny day with a high of 19 and a low of 9. The start of the Thanksgiving weekend will bring some cloudiness. Expect a high of 19 and a low of 12. Cloudiness will dominate on Sunday with some rain, a high of 19 and a low of 14. The clouds will stick around as we head into Monday with cloudy periods and some sunshine. Expect a high of 16 and a low of 10. And that's all for your five-day weather forecast. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Tatiana. President Barack Obama is hosting a meeting with top congressional Republicans at the White House today. The meeting is to seek a way out of the confrontation over the debt limit and the government shutdown. There will also be a closed-door House Republicans meeting on Capitol Hill, where the GOP is said to be discussing a short-term debt limit increase to avoid a government default this month. If the U.S. defaults on its payments, billions of dollars will be added daily to their national debt. The deadline for the debt ceiling is looming as the shutdown is now in its 10th day. Libyan Prime Minister Ali Zidane is expected to address his nation today. Zidane was just freed a few hours after he was abducted by gunmen earlier this morning. Zidane was taken by armed men from the Tripoli Hotel where he lives. The abduction may have been in retaliation for U.S. Special Forces seizing a Libyan al-Qaeda suspect last weekend. The British government says former Liberian President Charles Taylor will be transferred to a U.K. prison to serve his 50-year sentence for sponsoring atrocities in Sierra Leone. Taylor is the first former head of state convicted by an international war crimes court since World War II. The special court for Sierra Leone found him guilty in April 2012 of 11 counts of war crimes. He is also guilty of crimes against humanity, including terrorism, murder, and rape, and using child soldiers. Back at home, conservative Bob Runciman has become the second senator to post his spending on his website for all to see. The first was conservative Senator Doug Black, who started posting his expensive in, in January. MPs and senators have to spend money on travel and accommodations when they're away on business, but Senate rules do not require posting of detailed expenses online. Runciman says senators should report on the ways they use taxpayers' dollars. A youth worker and former city councillor in St. John, New Brunswick, was sentenced to 18 years in prison this morning for sex crimes involving young boys. Donnie Snook pleaded guilty in May to 46 incidents of sexual abuse and making pornographic images. 17 boys as young as 5 years old were involved over a 12-year span. Heart surgeons, radiation oncologists, and eye doctors are just some of the physicians who can't find work in Canada. A study by the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons says despite long wait times for surgeries and appointments, nearly one in six medical specialists cannot find work in their field. The principal investigator in the study says the situation is sad for doctors who spent more than a decade in school and for Canadians who desperately need access. The investigator says the problem boils down to a bad economy, frozen hospital budgets, a disorganized healthcare system, and poor workforce planning. And now with your sports news, here's Erin Kenny. Thanks, guys. Humber's men's and women's rugby teams asserted their dominance on their opponents last night. The men's team put on a clinic for Georgian, free of charge, with a 53-3 win continuing their undefeated season. On the women's side, the Hawks didn't let up on a Seneca squad that didn't even show up. They ran over them with a 53 to nothing win. Humber's basketball team will travel to Durham to take on the Lords for their last regular season game tonight. The Hawks are hoping to play spoiler as the Lords desperately need a win for a chance to get into the OCAA playoffs that start next week. Humber's currently ranked second with 12 wins and two losses. They are guaranteed a spot in the playoffs that get started next Friday at Wildwood Park in Rexdale, where they hope to see a strong home crowd turnout. The team will be in London this weekend for Nationals. The Toronto Raptors let their second preseason game slip late last night against the Minnesota Timberwolves in a 101-89 loss. DeMar DeRozan scored 17 points for Toronto and Rudy Gay added 11. New Raptor Tyler Hansborough had 9 points and 7 rebounds while Jonas Valanciunas had 9 points and Kyle Lowry added 8. 
The Raptors lost a key member of their team to injury last night. Raptor tore his Achilles while entertaining the crowd at the ACC. He's been placed on injury reserve and is expected to miss the season. That's awful. I just picked him up in my fantasy. The Toronto Maple Leafs will be in Nashville tonight to take on the 1-2 and two Predators. The Leafs will have, hope to have their leading scorer Joffrey Lupel back as he battles a calf injury. Fear not, Leafs fans, you're still in first place. The New York Giants will hope to avoid going 0-6 for the first time in 37 years on Thursday night football. They will have to go against a motivated 3-2 Chicago Bears at home who have also lost three straight of their own. Look for Chicago to get back to the winning ways while things continue to implode for New York. Now it's time for your game of the night. We're staying on the diamond for another Game 5 playoff elimination match. The Detroit Tigers will be in Oakland to take on the Athletics with the winner moving on to the ALCS Championship Series. Detroit will send 2001 Cy Young veteran pitcher Justin Verlander to the mound against Oakland's top-rated pitching prospect Sonny Gray. Even with Oakland at home, we got to go with Detroit. They have the experience, were runners-up in the World Series last year, and are hungry to get the job done this year. The first pitch goes out at 8.07 p.m. Eastern. That's all for sports. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks, Aaron. After the break, we'll get the latest in entertainment from Erica Vela. Rapstar takes the stage for the 2013 Grammy nomination concert. Glee fans say a teary goodbye to Canadian sweetheart Corey Monteith. And how did the Kanye Kimmel resolution go down? We'll have all your entertainment headlines after the break. 